life is. For Nadine Clower, that moment came on July 9, 1993, while vacationing with her husband and two sisters on a houseboat in the calm waters off the coast of Isla Morada, Florida. I've never known a barracuda to attack a person, but when they're provoked, it can be very dangerous. It happens so fast. They attack at 40 to 50 miles an hour. On the second day of their trip, Elizabeth McFalls and most of the others had started fishing early. Yes, oh, it's right here. <laughs> We're having a blast. Everything was going real good. I'm shooting my husband and myself around the front. And Nadine really doesn't fish that much. She was up there most of the time taking pictures of everybody. Nadine had some tragedies. She had lost her son a couple of years ago, and she's been in deep depression ever since. So this was just kind of, anything we can do to kind of pull her back. We try. I, I think I, I think I got a. I think I'm not kidding. Freddie really said I he had a barracuda, and. Uh, he was going under the side of the boat. This is a really good size. I've got him. Eddie, Freddie's got one. He's taking me around here. Hey, Dee, could you get the camera out? The fish came out so fast, really. It was just like the bullet, a torpedo, just to go right by you. You just seen from the water, you seen it hit. Beth, I need some help. Beth, I need some help. Terry? Terry. Nadine's husband, Terry, had been fishing off the back of the boat. She was laying in a puddle of blood. And uh, just a huge gash in her hip. Emergency Coast Guard. I was scared to death. I didn't even know how far out we was. None of us really knew how far out we was. Judy started to show me her leg, and I couldn't look. I mean, you could just lay your hand in the wound. It was, it was just that bad. We need help, quickly. I was just astonished that something like this was happening. And she said that I didn't mean for this to happen, that it was an accident, that I didn't mean to die. All right, you're out of the button right there. Come on, focus your eyes. But I told her, I said, you're not going to die. You're not going to leave us. So we won't let you die. Emergency Coast Guard. Towboat Captain Mitch Schachter heard Terry's radio call for help. Uh, we have a lady bitten severely by a barracuda. The victim's husband is very terrified and couldn't quite get it across to the Coast Guard where they were located. But by from what they said, we knew where they were at. We told the Coast Guard we knew where they were at and that we were on our way. Steve Thomas, an off-duty firefighter who happened to be in the area, also heard the call. If you get a barracuda in a certain environment, he can bite you. I wouldn't want to be around a barracuda when he's feeding and mistakes your hand for a bait. I put our boat right next to the houseboat. And we loaded Nadine onto our boat, which is four or five times as fast as the houseboat. I could see that there was a five or six foot circle of blood on the floor. It was as bad as they thought it was. Okay, who's staying, who's going? Major concern was the loss of blood and getting her to, to help quickly. I want to saw her leave. I didn't know if I'd ever see her alive again or not. Just watching her go, I thought that was it. I really did. 
A Coast Guard helicopter that was practicing maneuvers nearby headed to the scene when they received word of the situation. The captain on the CTO slowed the boat down and we boarded the vessel. The people that were in the cockpit had a dazed and disbelief look on their face. There was quite a bit of blood loss. She was very, very pale and it looked like she was going to go into shock. Okay, let's take a look at what we got here. I laid her flat. I elevated her feet and I applied direct pressure. In a matter of minutes, the helicopter was there. Lieutenant Mark Stewart was the pilot. Okay, rescue checklist part is complete. We're ready for trailer basket delivery to the vessel below. And we like to get in there, pick the patient up, and get out. The more time it hovers, the increases the risk, the probability of something happening. The line is on deck. You're clear to move left. Roger. Come on. Nice. We got her into the basket, and she was crying and scared. Nadine is afraid of heights. We had just lost our son in an auto accident, and he was medevaced to the hospital. And when I realized that she was bottled like a little rag doll down in this basket and was going up in a helicopter to a hospital, she was totally helpless. She was totally alone, scared to death. I didn't know if, if she had the will to want to live. Hold your position, this looks good. Prepare to take the load. Bringing up the basket. Bring up the basket. Now she's command, the basket halfway up. I was hoping we'd see her again alive. We just, we didn't know, really. I almost feel like she gave up to die. I really do. Within 30 minutes of the Barracuda attack, Nadine Clover arrived at Mariner's Hospital, where a medical team, including orthopedic surgeon Robert Casola, took over her care. We determined that her injuries were very severe. She had one large bite involving the upper inner thigh. Upon the release of the bite, the fish bit her four other times. And so she had this staggered bite with multiple muscle cuts. The doctor came out to tell us how close okay. that she actually came to death, that the bite had come so close to the femoral artery. It was about a thumb's length away. And he said had it hit, there was no way we could have even got her off the boat. So she would bled to death right there on the boat. So I guess God was with us more than we thought. <laughs> After extensive reconstructive surgery and physical therapy for her leg and her hand, Nadine has fully recovered. At the time, at all you could see was just a tragedy. We almost lost our sister. Couldn't understand why. But I think Nita has helped her. She has come a long way since then. If I had heard the story from somebody else, there's no way I would have believed it. But all I could see was, you know, this mouthful of teeth just coming straight at me. And I, I could not believe it. I had to burn up. And my, my first thought was that I was going to die and join my son. I kept trying to talk to my son and trying to talk to God. And it was like neither one of them would answer me. And I thought, well, I'm not going to die, so I may as well fight this damn thing. She's changed quite a bit since the accident happened. 
she didn't care really whether she lived or not. And for the first time since her son's death, she realized that she didn't have a purpose in life and that she did have to go on. I think about the grace of God made him living today. And the cooperation and well-working people that was involved, I totally and forever will be grateful. So I want to go back to the same spot and try to catch one, if not the same one, one about the size, and I'll get in my mind that that's the fish, and I'll slap it good and throw it back in the water. <laughs> Let's get even with it good. <laughs> really can. Next. I knew something major had happened. She let out one scream, and then she was completely hysterical from that point on. She just kept screaming and screaming and screaming.